Welcome to the TDI IANTD UK Diving Rescue Exertion Demonstration. There is a lot of discussion about how fit you need to be for diving. Most routine diving is easy and relaxing, but in a rescue situation the effort required is much higher. TDI and IANTD instructors in the UK decided to find out how much effort is actually required for casualty recovery. We set up a rescue scenario, put a Sunto heart rate monitor on the rescuer and filmed the whole thing. The rescuer's heart rate is shown in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. The objective is to examine effort, not technique. The rescue starts at a depth of 27 metres and the water is cold with limited visibility. The casualty is non-responsive but breathing. Both divers are equipped as typical weekend tech divers. The casualty is wearing a twin set and stage while the rescuer is wearing a rebreather and a stage. Before the start of the rescue, before the rescuer has even found the casualty, his heart rate is 140 beats per minute. This is psychological stress combined with the normal effect of diving in cold water. The rescuer finds the casualty and gets hold of him. Notice that his heart rate is already 167 beats per minute as he begins the lift. The rescuer and the casualty are both instructors and were chosen due to their typical build. We deliberately chose typical divers rather than super fit individuals to give a realistic impression of the effort required by the average instructor. The lift is very controlled. You can see that he is finning very little and using buoyancy control to lift the casualty. Poor buoyancy control requires more finning and is harder work. Please note that this video is not meant to be a perfect demonstration of rescue technique. Unless the rescuer practices regularly, they will have some issues with their technique. Because of this, the rescuer in the video is demonstrating a typical rescue rather than a perfect rescue. The latest guidelines for diver rescue from the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society state that the rescuer should give stationary rescue breaths and then tow without breaths to the nearest surface support. We chose to initiate the tow immediately in full kit to ensure maximum exertion. The rescuer attracts attention and starts the tow to shore. This will be the peak of physical exertion. It's worth looking at some of the details of the rescuer at this point. He's male and age 45 with a BMI of 31. A Chester step test gave an estimated VO2 max of 44. With a BMI of 31 and a VO2 max of 44, the HSC diving medical guidelines put him in the borderline area for both BMI and VO2 max, making him an ideal candidate for this test. He has a current HSC diving medical, but is excluded from saturation diving. Now that the rescuer has started towing, you can see that the added physical stress has pushed his heart rate up to 180 beats per minute. The rescuer could have elected to ditch his and the casualties kit. He could have used more efficient rescue techniques. The next step will be to repeat this exercise using different configurations and techniques. At age 45, the maximum recommended heart rate is 175 beats per minute. Here, 
you can see that the rescuer is over 180 beats per minute and so is over his maximum recommended heart rate. This shows the amount of physical effort required. Although not the main point of this film, this shows the importance of regularly practicing rescue skills. Good technique saves significant mental and physical effort. As the rescuer reaches the shore, his heart rate has been above 170 beats per minute for three minutes and has been at 180 beats per minute for over a minute and a half. During de-kitting, the diver has to deal with the physical effort of the rescue plus the mental stress of focusing on de-kitting and casualty management. You can see that despite this being a simulated event, the diver is under realistic stress facing multiple challenges. We can all relate to losing a little focus in this situation. during CPR that the maximum heart rate of 186 beats per minute is achieved. At this point, the rescuer's heart rate has been at or above 180 beats per minute for three and a half minutes. 186 beats per minute is 106% of his maximum recommended heart rate. This corresponds to a VO2 max of just over 45, which is exactly the level set out as a target in the HSC diving medical guidelines. VO2 max is normally rated against the person's age and gender, but the HSC guidelines do not make allowance for age or gender. The reason for this is that it doesn't matter who the rescuer is, the effort required is defined by the casualty. The rescue was stopped at this level of exertion. We hope this film has shown you the level of effort and fitness required to carry out a rescue. We believe that all instructors, irrespective of agency, should be fit enough to rescue a student in an emergency. And indeed all divers should be fit enough to rescue their buddy. It appears that the HSE guidelines, whilst not being perfect, are at least in the right ballpark. We will be continuing to explore the stress of diving and rescue scenarios on technical and recreational divers. The aim continues to be to provide data which helps us all evaluate our training and fitness. IANTD UK and TDI invite other agencies to contribute to this process. <laughs>